Yeah, so welcome everybody. Morning session is not necessarily the best thing uh, to be in, but I'm sure you guys are energized. And it's amazing. I mean, I looked at the conference program and the papers that are going to be presented and the keynotes. Uh, amazing stuff there. And it got me back to when I started my career, um, almost 30 years back. I graduated with a mechanical engineering degree. But for some reason, I took a course in my final year on computer analysis and numerical analysis. At that time, computers were not considered important for mechanical engineers. So that kind of dates me. Um, but I took it. And then after a year, I took a job as a software user understanding executive, software developer, and also did software testing. This was long back, 1985 to be precise. And since then, my journey has taken me through various things. And I've learned different things as I go along. But none of it has been what was taught in college. A lot of things was what I learned on my own, a lot of things what at, at work. And as you look at digital transformation and digital converse, conversion, I kind of want to share some of my thoughts around what we need to be as whoever we are. We are designers, user testers, software developers. And early on, we were put on these silos. But thanks to Agile and DevOps, now that's gone away. You can't figure out who is a tester and who is a developer. You need to develop those skills, nevertheless. And that's what my talk is going to be today. Again, the title is Responsible Creativity, Future of Software Tester. And I purposely put it as tester rather than testing, because I'm not a qualified person to say how testing needs to be done in the new world. But if some of the thoughts that I'm talking about today hopefully can help you to think about how do I bring that into testing world. This was an article written by Chris Ward. And I just saw this right after I was invited to give this keynote. And the title of the, um, his article was, Are We All Doomed? And Our Role in Ethics of Technology. And it's an interesting article. I would request you to go and read it. It kind of talks about what has happened in digital transformation and how we have moved from, we were always doing tools, right? Stone Age, we were doing stone tools. And now we are doing digital tools. But the progress on technology has happened so fast that sometimes we have forgotten that there is a human element. And there are repercussions beyond making it faster, easier, and better experiences. Yeah. So one of the things I'll start with is changing trends, specifically in design and user testing and the digital development world. Obviously, all of you know the impact of Agile and DevOps. We have to be faster, quicker, and at the same time figure out all the sorts of things that we have to do. We have to empathize with our fellow travelers. As a tester, I need to know what does the software developer do and what does the designer do. And I hear that all the time from my design team when I was working in industry. I moved into academia about six years back, but before that in industry, it was always, oh, the software developers don't get it. We have designed such a wonderful thing, and they don't get it. right? And impact of Agile and DevOps has made it much more drastic. New tools and technologies are the say of the world. Because if you look at user behavior analysis, such as Google Analytics and uh, Adobe Analytics, now using big data, I can analyze users' data. And gone are the days that I have to design anything from a segment perspective. I can actually design something based on a group of people. And that then actually makes it quite difficult to understand how do I then test it, not based on a segment requirements, but a behavioral requirement. And the second thing that has happened is, whether you call it as SDET or SET, software developers in training. Software developers have started taking responsibility of training, which kind of has created this anxiety saying that, our, as a tester, is my job at stake? Putting a greater demand to learn basic programming and scripting. Interestingly enough, designers are going through the same thing. And we have done that at an academics level where designers learn business as well as technology. Variety of mobile mo devices coming in, 
over years, and that has then increased the pressure on all fields to understand how do I design, whether it's responsive design or other ways, how do I design for this plethora of devices that are coming into people's hands. That has also increased or changed our roles and dynamics. Seamless collaboration and integration between departments, as I said earlier. And things have moved from performance testing to performance engineering. So it's no more important or enough just to say that my system performs good. We have to look at also, is it performing the way my end users or customers are going to use it? And then, then it becomes a much more integrated approach towards performance testing than how it was done earlier. To add to that, the world is becoming complex. We are no more at only software development, self-driving cars, the everyday use of robots, IoT is heralding a new era of connected devices. And this becomes a very interesting era where all of us need to change. I mean, interestingly, of when I checked, your community does a, has done a wonderful job. Amazing amount of adaptability and flexibility. By adapting, developing, and implementing new methods, such as you have learned con uh, contextual research, persona testing, mob testing, mobile testing, cloud testing, and all that, so that whatever the trends are and however it is, the world is changing in the testing world, uh, your community has adapted. Interestingly, you have contributed, whether it was a center of test excellence or manual or automated testing. You have done a fantastic job of figuring out how to design tests, where do I do automated testing, whether it's unit, component, integration, or API testings, and when, when I can do manual testing. There have been talks have, that I've heard, whether it's designers or testers, that we don't necessarily need that many of them, and then developers can actually take this role of testing as well as designing. And some organizations have done that, where developers have become testers, developers have become designers. I personally don't necessarily think it's the right thing. And it can create catastrophic blunders. Some examples follow. Were any of you in London in May 2017, transiting or coming back? Anybody? My brother was, and he was stuck on Heathrow. And you know what happened? For the sixth time in that one year, British Airways faced a massive global IT failure, which led to airline canceling all flights from Heathrow and Gatwick. And you know what happened, why it happened? A year before, they decided they can lay off about hundreds of IT and software testing people, because now we are agile, we are DevOps, we can do better. And this result shows that there are some people which were important and you cannot let go of them. It may not be out of place if I say that it takes a ma one man and one woman and nine months to create a baby, and you cannot reduce any of that. Yeah? Second example, November 2000, National Cancer Institute in Panama. This device of radiation therapy was designed by a US industry, and this is many times. I worked in US for 15 years before I moved back here, worked in tech industry, and earlier, there is this thing about, oh, we know what the world needs, and what US needs is what the world needs. This was long back. And this is exactly what happened in this situation, where the system was done beautifully. However, they didn't necessarily realize how cultural differences could create havoc. And the case here was Panama, where the doctors wanted to use five blocks of protecting your healthy tissues. And the US team had thought that usually it is four blocks are enough. Now, the software allowed the Panama doctors to go and change things to, on the computer software or the software to change it, um, trick it to say that it is five, four blocks, whereas actually there were five. But one thing there was is you had to create holes from where the radiation would come. And what the software engineers had done was if you draw the radiation circle in a particular way, it gave a certain amount of radiation. However, if you draw the other way, it actually gave two times the radiation. Now the users, the software engineers, and whoever did the requirements planning did not know what the cultural difference was. And the model that was used in the software was not known by the doctors. Eight people died, 
20 people seriously injured, and all the doctors involved in this were indicted of murder. Again, a situation where as a developer, as a software tester, you have to understand cultural differences, you have to understand much bigger than aspect than just saying, I'm testing whatever has been given to me, and this is working fine. It'll be fine as long as you have understood what the world needs. The third example is Nest, a beautiful design. Everybody loves it. But in mid-January 2016, it stopped functioning. And this was the coldest winter. And the reason it functioned is, was their latest firmware didn't take care of old filters and incompatible boilers. So this is a case where the system works fine with the newest technology. But if you have not done backward integration and you have not understood that, you could get into deep trouble. Test professionals, I think, need to be beyond what is expected of the software and the users. Apart from testing skills, test design, and test automation, ISTBQ exam certification says that you need various qualities. And I'm going to just list that very quickly. A creative mind, intellectual curiosity, self-confidence. You need to be stubborn and preserve, persevere, similar to designers, because software developers and the requirements analysis people have done whatever they wanted to do, but you need to play a role in there. Diplomacy, contextual adaptability, and ability to work in a team. How many of you have these qualities already among yourself? Can you please raise hands quickly? I see one hand in the back. Yeah. Few. If you don't have those capabilities, and I'm surprised, I'm, I think it's a morning without coffee. I would have seen more hands raising up. I feel that many of you have these qualities. However, apart from that, and if you don't have it, build those qualities. You don't necessarily have to go to school. As somebody said, Google is a very good teacher and YouTubes are very good teachers. But apart from that, we also need to have programming skills now and understanding of business needs. And this is not only for testers. It is at my school, we kind of harp on that that world has changed and you need to develop the skill sets. And interestingly enough, this align with this report that was done by Institute for the Future. It talks about future work skills for 2020 and beyond. And if you look at it, this aligns with, it has sense making, social intelligence, and many other things. But it aligns with what ISTBQ says are the skills and capabilities needed of a good tester and test designer. And this is why I think your community can make a substantial impact on the future. Let's look at what has happened to product innovation, because the skills that I talked about are good skills that a good quality um, assurance people needs to have and a designer needs to have are also very interesting skill sets for product innovation. And if you look at product innovation in India, we started from lower cost, uh, lower skill level, labor intensive work to full products. And the latest trend over the last five years has been new product development, entrepreneurial skills, and so on. Right? And to do that, all the skills that we talked about in the previous two slides, I call it as a world-class design skill sets, is a critical success enabler. The process of designing a product and system has gone through various authors, whether you call it participatory design, user experience design, human-centered design, to service design. The latest buzzword is design thinking. Everybody uses it. It's not that it started at D school. Design thinking has been used. And I have issue with this word because it almost kind of gives a feeling that only designers can have this thinking. But it, actually, if you look at what D school says, it has empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. And if you can read this, it says develop a deep understanding of the challenge, clearly articulate the problem, and so on. You brainstorm, you design things, and you test. And I looked at, are there parallels to this in software testing. Pradeep had asked this question, I'll ask it again. How many of you know what is design thinking and you have applied it in your work? I see a few hands. 
But if I tell you that you have been doing it without knowing that it is design thinking, so defining and investing your quality issue is actually empathize and define, and there are a lot of skill sets that you can apply from these two phases on that stage. And then when you go and develop and corrective and preventive actions or suggest preventive and corrective actions, that's when you're working in the ideate, prototype, and test mode. Now these two frameworks of product innovation and design thinking, what it has allowed us to do, and thanks to Agile and DevOps, we have created frameworks that create efficient, fast, desirable experiences for users of products and services. And great that it contributes to current consumerist society by crafting experiences that help sell products and services. But what it has not done is, what it could be but it has not done, is to become an early warning system. And we see this all the time. We look at the way the social media is used, smartphone is used, gaming and online presence, presence is used. We are driving people to death because of the way social media is used. We drive people to not to talk to each other sitting at the dinner table. A family sits at a dinner table and not talk to each other, which is created because of the way we have developed technology. And this is a time when it can be changed. Apart from the social issues, it also creates economical and ecological impacts. So just a few examples. Over the last seven years, global debt has gone up by $57 trillion because of this consumeristic behavior. E-waste has increased across the border. And the reason for this is we have always figured out in our development cycle a cycle which says cradle to grave. We start and then we see how it retires. But as future creative people, we have to think about cradle to cradle. How can I use different material? How can I be different systems? So it's not only reuse, recycle, uh, but we have to see how does it actually get biodegraded. So on, apart from just saying that the three-circle model of looking at people, desirability, business, and feasibility, the fourth circle also then becomes extremely important, and that fourth circle is responsibility. Have you thought about ecological design? Have you thought about what impact would I have on environment? Now, a lot of you may think that I am a tester. What role do I have to play? But because of the qualities that I talked about earlier, you can make a difference. You can go and make that difference within, within your community. So I say to you, slow and study with your qualities of good tester, you have to move up the value chain and make an impact. You can also think that if within your company, if nobody is providing you that voice, then you don't necessarily have to be only a job seeker. You saw the third hill that we are on with entrepreneurial skills, and India gives you fantastic opportunity to be an entrepreneur. And I'm not saying it very lightly, but when I look at the qualities that a good software tester needs to have, you can be a fantastic entrepreneur. So go and become a job creator. If your company doesn't allow you to do responsible design. And there are frameworks for doing this, uh, responsible creativity, as I call it. You look at, uh, you integrate with the existing system. There are three aspects that are very important. You need to care for people, you need to care for the context, and the third element is fair share. If you don't think about it, and if you just think about the way current businesses think that I created the business and all the profit comes to me and my stakeholders on Wall Street, this is going to be doomed. And you have seen these examples of what has happened to Uber and Ola in India and Nama Tiger coming up. How many, how many of you have used Nama Tiger? That's a new taxi calling app and it is based on responsible creativity design where it's not that some person is making all the profits and hooking up people to make things it is a much more cooperative system. We have a fantastic system in Mumbai, Mumbai Dabbawalas. It's again a responsible creativity-based design. And interestingly enough, all the skill sets that we talked about are really applicable, and if you have developed these good qualities of a good tester, you are there, you could actually be a responsible creative designer. Oops. So what can be the future? So role of software test tester is much bigger than pure testing, I think. You have to be doing, but you need to also think about what the strategy of your team is, what your company is, and what the overall world is. 
You can be a responsible, creative innovator and have entrepreneurial thinking. And if it gets tough within the organization that you're working, then follow your heart and go towards becoming an entrepreneur. Now, there are many different ways that you can be trained to become an entrepreneur. Because a lot of, the, there are, I saw a Gallup research which says uh, people, 60% of Indians have entrepreneurial spirit, but many of them don't know how to do it. And some of them who think that they can do it, they are not necessarily doing the right way, and that's why we have 4% success rate. However, there are institutes now and programs now which allow you to become a very good entrepreneur. So seek your path. And I will end my oh, I have two more slides. Um, so try to become, rather than becoming an I-shaped individual, to become a T-shaped individual where you have a domain, but you are expanding your knowledge to become, have programming skills, business skills, and so on. Better at the modern creative professional needs to be thinking about a pie-shaped individual where you have at least two strengths which you are strong and then build a broader thing. If you have read Steve Jobs' biography, autobiography, you would have heard about he going to a calligraphy class because he was so depressed after coming to India and going back. He thought India would give him so less. It didn't. He goes back. He was wandering to Stanford. He saw this calligraphy class. He took it. And that had a huge impact on Mac. Beautiful designs came out because of that. That's what he claims. Right? So I will end with this quote. If you always do what you always did, you will always get what you always got. It doesn't really matter who these thought leaders said uh, were. They have been attributed to many of them. What matter is, matters is the truth of it and the point of it. If you want to change the world, if you want to make, see a different result, then you have to change doing the things that you're doing and be that force. Thank you. Be the change. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Prabhu. Um, amazing opening to the conference and amazing ending, too. Um, if um, the delegates would like to, yeah, just raise your hand. Um, the microphone will reach you. Please uh, stand up. Uh, call your name, call out your company, and they then pose a question and hand over the hand the microphone back. Yeah, it's on. Just, just. Hello, everybody. Hello, sir. Thank you for motivating all the QAs out here. I have a question related to the design thinking that you spoke about. Uh, you said that we've already been doing that. So my question is, if we've already been doing that, then why is there probably always been a difference between what was needed and what is made? If we really empathized and did all of those pieces as per the design thinking, don't you think empathizing is not just about trying to see what is asked, but also resolve the problems around and let the user know? Thank you. You didn't get your name and company. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm Rukhaya Khanam. I've come from Hyderabad. Uh, I've been, I was working in uh, a company called Technoward Solutions. I have recently resigned so that I look out for the new opportunities and see what difference can I make to the QA society. Thank you. OK, okay. good question. A lot of us feel like that, right? When I was uh, a non-designer, I'm still not a trained designer. I'm a mechanical engineer with human factors, master's and PhD, but I have managed designers. But this thinking about emphasizing is there inherent in each of us. And the reason it is inherent in each of us are because we are humans. That is the difference between animals and humans, because we can empathize. Right? But what happens is, in your given work, you may not necessarily empathize because your work doesn't allow you to do it with the end users. But you need to be empathizing with your teammates. Or you need to be empathizing with your software developers. Let's say we were doing a waterfall model where requirements analysis is done, product development happens, and you're testing. If you do not empathize with what the program developers and the requirement analysis people have gone, and I'm sure you would be doing that. So it is a skill. You may not be doing empathizing with the end users, but it is a skill that you have it in. That's what I was trying to get to. It's a skill that all of us have. We can develop it, and it is extremely important. It also becomes important to empathize with your core developers, in, especially in DevOps and Agile, because our skill sets are quite different, complementary sometimes at stress. And if you don't have that skill, develop it. It's very easy to develop because it is an inherent quality that people have. 
I hope that answers the question. A microphone in the front. Hello. So, um, the future looks like we are going to focus on customer experience rather than people, tools, technology. I think that's where the focus is on. So, from a customer experience standpoint, um, uh, the architects or the business folks will drive the vision. But what is that for a QA team in it? How does he envision the customer experience? That's a very good point. Uh, however, QA tester, if you are siloed into saying that, okay, I will develop everything, I'll give it to you, and you test, then yes, there is, maybe there is no role. However, if you test something that the requirements team and the developers team have designed based on whether it is customer requirements, end user requirements, stakeholder requirements, because you have to look at all of those things and there are tensions between that. My proposition to you is try to get involved in that as much as you can. Because the more you understand what is the ecosystem out there, what is the stakeholders requirements, and I call it as a stakeholder because it's much bigger team term to include customers and end users, it allows you to then do your testing in the right way and also question if something doesn't work the, right, the way it has to be, then you can question it. I don't know whether that answers you. So it is, the whole thing is because of Agile and DevOps, we are allowed to move away from our silos. And we need to make use of that to get involved upfront if you want to think about this as a um, phase and stages, which is not there in Agile, but let's say if I, when I'm doing my understanding of the context, try to get involved into that from a pretext that it will make you a better tester. Okay, thank you. Uh, what is the question? Re thing that I said, I mean that sentence, if you do what you, if you always do what you do, you will always get what you get. That is the crux of the thing. We can call it design thinking, we can call it creative design, creative thinking, doesn't matter. It. The whole idea is I need to be on the front end of figuring out what changes are happening in the world are the changes that I'm creating impacting the society in the way I want to be done? Because a lot of times it, what happens is it is done because somebody else in the business wants to do it. But you as an individual need to look at it to say that, do, you, do I need to be here? And that particular quote allows you to think. Yeah? So it always think about, is this what I want to do? I've been doing this. Do I need to do something different? It doesn't necessarily mean that you're moving away from your testing world and going and doing completely different, that could, that could also happen. I never was a mechanical engineer in my life. But it, that could happen. But having that quote in front of you, for me at least it has helped to always figure out what am I, what am I doing? Why, why am I, what is my contribution to this world? Yeah? Does that answer your question? Yeah. Thank you, thank you. So the